you're here today with Harvey Pitt. Harvey, what's your current title? Uh, it's uh, Chief Executive Officer of both Calorama Partners and Calorama Legal Services. They are uh, sister companies that provide consulting and legal advice to companies that are trying to improve and do better. Great. And what's your past affiliation with the SEC? And if you could sort of walk us through the chronology. Well, um, I started as a staff attorney in 1968 and uh, right out of law school um, and uh, progressed from being a staff attorney in the general counsel's office, becoming a legal as assistant for Commissioner uh, Francis M. Wheat, Frank Wheat, who was uh, the author of the Wheat Report, um, a, um, a report that suggested that the Commission could coordinate its missions under both the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 without any statutory amendment. It was uh, an important concept and one that has prevailed um, all the way since then. Um, after serving as um, uh, Frank's legal assistant or legal counsel, I uh, spent uh, two more years, more or less, in the general counsel's office, uh, uh, progressing, becoming special counsel, and uh, then uh, in uh, 1972, I believe it was, um, I became the first chief counsel of what was then known as the Division of Market Regulation. Today it's gone back to its original title of Trading and Markets, but um, back in that day it was Market Reg. Um, and I served in that position until uh, Ray Garrett, Jr. became chairman of the commission. Um, I think I have left out the fact that in 1971, <clears throat> I was seconded to um, the SEC's Institutional Investor Study. This was a study mandated by Congress um, to review the trading patterns and habits of institutional investors. Um, there was a theory abound that uh, large institutions all traded in the same direction, which of course is akin to suggesting that the world is flat. Um, and so the study was designed to um, test those theories and also uh, track the trading activities and portfolio management uh, processes of large institutions. Uh, the report was written by econometricians uh, and uh, after drafts of the report were provided to um, Commissioner uh, Dick Smith, who was the commissioner overseeing the study, um, it was decided to bring four young lawyers uh, onto the study to rewrite not uh, reinterpret, but rewrite the report so that uh, people who are not econometricians might understand what the conclusions were. Um, um, and, uh, so I did that and then the study was done and um, I um, became a special counsel in the Office of General Counsel. Then I became um, the um, first chief counsel of Market Reg. And then when Ray Garrett Jr. came in, I became uh, his executive assistant or uh, what today is known as chief of staff. Um, and um, after a year and a half, 
uh, of that. Um, there was a vacancy uh, in the commission's uh, general counsel, and um, I was appointed general counsel. Um, uh, from that point, I served three years as general counsel, um, and then went into private practice, where I served for almost a quarter of a century. Um, and uh, then in uh, 2001, uh, I was honored to be appointed as the 26th chairman of the SEC um, by George W. Bush, uh, who was the president at that time. And we have two oral histories in our museum, uh, one in 2007 and one in 2008. Talk to us about what issues you might have discussed in your 2007 oral history. Well, I believe um, that um, the 2007 one was about um, principally or a lot about um, uh, Ivan Boski and how the entire matter unfolded, how we um, uh, handled it, and um, uh, I believe I, I talked about a variety of additional issues. The uh, 2008 oral history was um, about um, the period when I became chairman of the commission and the markets um, were shut down because of 9-11. Those were the main um, uh, sort of issues that I talked about. And is there anything today, looking back on, on that period or those oral histories, that you would highlight or reflect on in a different way? I wouldn't reflect on it in a um, uh, a different way. Um, I thought um, the um, treatment of the 9-11 um, problem was remarkable because <clears throat> it was um, basically handled by the outside world apolitically, which was um, fortunate for all of us. Um, I had support from both sides of the aisle. Um, I think part of that was uh, because it was um, an externally generated crisis. Um, it um, was different from a subsequent crisis that occurred on my tenure, which was that the excesses of the 90s um, had resulted um, in the um, market um, fragmentation of um, what appeared to be uh, very strong and sound companies like Enron, <coughs> WorldCom, and the like. And that was an internally generated one. Uh, when that crisis hit, um, uh, the bipartisanship that we had seen with respect to 9-11 um, um, completely dissipated. Um, and people were um, intent on trying to point fingers and um, trying to find people to blame and so on, uh, which is an unfortunate approach. Um, I, I've always felt <clears throat> that the first goal when a crisis hits is to solve the problem. Um, once you've solved it, you can then go back and try to figure out why things went wrong. And even perhaps if it's crucial, who may have had some responsibility. <clears throat> but 
Um, the um, political um, divisiveness that was developing then was such that, um, uh, and it, it's not limited to Democrats or Republicans, it's, that's one thing that is bipartisan, the, the dissonance between the parties, um, which is very sad. I never viewed the securities laws as political. I always viewed them as substantive issues, and that's how you solve them. But um, um, to my way of thinking, um, people were more interested in finding scapegoats than finding solutions, and that appears to be the process we employ um, continually today on a whole host of issues, um, which I guess um, serves some people's individual purposes, but it doesn't, doesn't serve the country very well. What serves the country well is how did this crisis get generated? Why did it occur? How could we conceivably have prevented it? And how did we respond to it? How can we improve our response? And all of that would be enormously um, uh, valuable. In um, <clears throat> my experience, the um, best way to improve, for example, an agency's performance is to build on the lessons the agency has learned. So for example, when 9-11 hit, um, we were able to rely on a lot of the work that David Ruder and the commission had done in connection with the 87 market crash. Um, that work was invaluable in informing us as to how to reopen the markets. Because my sense at the time was um, we would get one chance to reopen the markets, but if after reopening them they tanked again, I didn't think anybody would trust the markets anymore. And I didn't want to contemplate what those consequences would have been. So to me, it was crucial to learn the lessons from past problems and move forward with those and apply them to a different set of situations. Um, after 9-11 uh, and we uh, succeeded in having the markets reopen, I asked um, uh, the staff of what was then Market Reg uh, to work with the staff of the Federal Reserve Board to do a lessons learned um, report. And I stressed to them, I'm not interested in pointing fingers or finding scapegoats. If people did not do things they should have done. I want those lessons learned, but I want this to be a constructive effort. I want to create a blueprint for future crises based on what we did do well and also what we didn't do so well and could have done better, uh, which is what we, we did, and that was the one thing that the 9-11 Commission um, touted as a good example of good government. I didn't write it and so on, the staff did, um, but they knew and understood that we were not out looking for scalps. And um, that's why I say it was unfortunate uh, when Enron hit uh, that uh, people were so eager to point fingers and, and find blame and so on. But um, that's the way it is and that's the way it was. And part of the role of the chairman is to um, overcome those obstacles and not take them personally. So Harvey, you are one of the three founding 
trustees of the SEC Historical Society. Tell us why you think it's important that we preserve the history of our financial markets. Um, I start with the proposition that um, the key to our political freedoms um, are our economic freedoms. We need a society in which not just theoretically, but pragmatically, any man, woman, or child, um, whatever their origins, whatever their backgrounds, whatever their race, um, uh, sex, or um, uh, orientation, um, can achieve success. Um, our financial markets are the key to that. I, keeping our financial markets um, as um, rigorous as they are by providing people who invest the comfort, the knowledge that there is um, somebody watching um, how our markets operate and ensuring to the best of the ability of the agency that the markets operate fairly, um, it ensures that everyone has a chance to partake of financial success. And with financial success comes even more freedom and also more responsibility. So by preserving the history of the SEC, which has been at the epicenter of creating this uh, regimen we have, we preserve for future regulators, future staff members, future historians, um, future academics analyzing these things, um, all of the insights, the thoughts that went in, uh, good and bad, to handling significant issues that make our capital markets the absolute greatest in the world. Um, to me, um, without being um, obnoxious about it, that's something every American should take great pride in. And preserving the history of all of the pieces that helped us get to that point to me is um, one of the most um, valuable and important functions. And the SEC Historical Society performs that, particularly now with you at the head, to uh, excellence. And um, uh, I think keeping and preserving that record is essential. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, when we had to deal with 9-11, I was able to build on the work of David Ruder in 1987. That was magnificent. So um, I, I believe very strongly in the mission of the SEC Historical Society because I believe very strongly in the mission of the SEC, which is a great agency and an agency I, I, I truly love.